Good morning and welcome to St Paul's Old Ford um, Sunday morning preach for Sunday the 24th of May. It's great to have you here. Let's, let's start with a prayer. Father, we thank you that even though we can't gather in person, we are one in your spirit, Father. That we are all born of you, all loved and cared for by you. Father, I pray that we would know that deep in our hearts this morning, we ask in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen. The, first, the reading, the gospel reading this morning is from John chapter 17. I'm just going to quickly read that and recap that for you. After Jesus said this, he looked towards heaven and prayed, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son, that your Son may glorify you. For you granted him authority over all people, that he might give eternal life to all those you have given him. Now this is eternal life, that they know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. I have brought you glory on earth by finishing the work you gave me to do. And now, Father, glorify me in your presence with the glory I had with you before the world began. I have revealed to you I have revealed you to those whom you gave me out of the world. They were yours. You gave them to me, and they have obeyed your word. Now they know that everything you have given me comes from you. For I gave them the words you gave me, and they accepted them. They knew with certainty that I came from you, and they believed that you sent me. I pray for them. I'm not praying for the world, but for those you have given me, for they are yours. All I have is yours, and all you have is mine. And glory has come to me through them. I will remain in the world no longer, but they are still in the world. And I am coming to you, Holy Father. Protect them by the power of your name, the name you gave me, so that they may be one as we are one. In this reading, we see John, see Jesus, sorry, coming full circle in his life. He's fulfilled his ministry. He's about to be reunited with the Father, being fully divine and fully human. He has revealed who he is, but he's also shown us who we are in him. I don't know if you've noticed, but in the Bible, we hear lots about Jesus' birth and then nothing much for 30 years before we hit his three years of ministry and onto his death and resurrection. Yet we are told that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. So it's important to see this overview of his life and see how that can relate to us. As I said last week, John is at pains to point out at the beginning of the gospel that Jesus is one with God. Not only the Son born on earth, but present from the beginning of time one in the Father. So why does he emphasise this? Well, I think it's because he wants us to know that we are also sons and daughters of God from conception. Like Paul says in Romans 8, we are children of God, co-heirs with Christ. Or my favourite psalm, Psalm 139, says this, for you created my inmost being, you knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in the secret place. When I was woven together in the depths of the earth, your eyes saw my unformed body. All the days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them came to be. We are all known by God created in his image, whether we like it or not. Yet, we still seem to have to discover this understanding because somehow it naturally becomes hidden from us. And if we look at the story of Christ, I wonder if he had to grasp that. Maybe that's why we didn't hear much about the early years of his life. Maybe he was wrestling with what it was to be human yet divine wrestling with who he was or what his calling was. It's only when he's thought to be 30, year old, 30 years old in Matthew 3 that we read of John the Baptist announcing his coming and baptising him. We read of the Holy Spirit descending on him and a voice announcing, this is my son. In some ways, 
This is such a marker of Jesus' public recognition of who he was. But then straight after this recognition, he's whisked away into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. It seems like he had to go through his own process of recognising who he was in God. But what is certain is that he never denies the truth, that he is the Son of God, and he always trusts the Father. I don't know about you, over the past seven or eight weeks of lockdown, I've gone through many emotions, feeling useless at times in the face of what's happening, feeling relaxed as the weather gets warm and I'm so blessed that I can sit in my garden and enjoy a little bit of nature. Times when I'm feeling angry with myself. Times when I'm feeling angry with my family, frustrated at my lack of proactivity or so proactively doing that I don't get time to sit and see what God is saying and doing in this time. Maybe for you, you're in a place where you feel a little lost. During this pandemic, this COVID-19, anxiety is higher. People fear for their health, their livelihoods, their friends and the family who could be at risk. So if you take nothing away from today except one message, hold on to the fact that you are a son or a daughter of God, a co-heir with Christ, this means we have to live and we have a life full of purpose. As I wrote that the other day, I stopped to think, well, that's really nice. It's a lovely thing to say. You're full of purpose. God has a purpose. It sounds great, but what is your purpose? What is my purpose? Is my purpose the same as yours? And based on this passage, I was reminded of a slogan used in a mission organisation that I grew up in called Youth of the Mission. And their tagline is, to know God and to make him known. Could that be our purpose? Could that be the thing that drives us, knowing God? Is it really that important? Well, according to Jesus, yes. In fact, in this passage and in other passages we read, knowing God is eternal life. Jesus said, now this is eternal life, that they know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. Eternal life is not a gift of immortality or a future life in heaven, but a life shaped by the knowledge of God, as revealed in Jesus. For those 30 years that seem unaccounted for, Jesus probably went through many trials, had much joy, Witness the daily humdrum of life. We don't really know, and I'm making assumptions. But what we do see is he grasped who he was. When others started to recognise who he was, when he walked through de temptations, he demonstrated his trust in God, and he started to fulfil his ministry. We also read in this passage the words of Jesus saying, I have brought you glory on earth by finishing the work that you gave me to do. How did he bring glory to God? Jesus has revealed to the world who God is. Jesus reveals the true nature of God, a loving, faithful God, one that journeys with us through the humdrum of life, through the hard times when we face trials of many kinds, through the joys and the highs, and he's longing for us to live life to its fullness. Jesus shows us from the beginning of time he was with the Father, as we are, and that he will be reconciled with the Father, that death does not have the final say. Now, I've battled with many emotions recently, as I said. I recognise that my mental health varies, but each time I've gone through a dip, I have to remind myself that I am a son of the living God, that I'm loved in my frailties, the reality is that whilst Jesus has revealed this to us, we still need to keep uncovering this truth. I don't know about you, but I find it so encouraging to hear Jesus say at the end that he's praying for us, showing us right to the end that we are loved and we are prayed for. We are in the thoughts of the divine, the almighty. If you feel at all left behind today, isolated during this lockdown, frustrated, Know that you are loved, that you are not forgotten. 
And then we read in Acts that Jesus is taken to heaven, reconciled with the Father. This final act of his life, his ascension, is a reminder that we also are reconciled to the Father. We may not always recognise it, we may not always feel accepted, but we are one with God. As we continue to be restricted in our movements, and although for some this is an incredibly busy time, some people working from home whilst trying to look after and educate kids, it's difficult, but try and take time to pause each day. Jesus tells us in Acts that when we receive the Spirit, we will be his witnesses, making him known throughout the earth. There's also a brief pause here. And this week we wait in anticipation for Pentecost, the day we celebrate the gift of the Holy Spirit. But in the meantime, we wait. The disciples made their way back to Jerusalem and they met together and they prayed. One day, in the not too distant future, I hope, but when it's safe to do so, we will gather together in person back in this beautiful building um, to pray and worship as God's people. But until that time, have compassion on yourself. Reflect on where you are in the journey that Jesus' life models, knowing that we were born of God, and though we wonder, we will be reconciled with him, because his love reaches out and calls us into that knowing him. When we truly know who we are in Christ, we can begin to let go of the shame, the hurt, the anxiety much sooner when it comes around, and it will again and again. But we can be kept safe in the knowledge that we are loved, that we are being prayed for, and that we will be reunited with God. May you know God's grace and peace this week. Amen.